These assholes are still sending Harry back to live with abusive people during the summer? How the fuck is Harry doing this? He didn't pull out a wand. He didn't utter any spell names. So why does he have to use that shit ever if he can silently will a person he doesn't like to bloat up and float away? It's pretty damn convenient that the magic bus shows up literally just as Harry's about to have a confrontation with the dog. Or inconvenient because that was his godfather who loves him. And a lot of worry and mystery could have been alleviated if the bus had simply been three minutes slower. But the muggles, can't they see us? Muggles? They don't see nothing, do they? All that bullshit with Ron, Harry, the flying car, and the muggles was a bunch of bullshit. <laughs> Cat Wilhelm scream. Looking forward to a new term? Yeah, it should be great. Right, because every other year at Hogwarts has been peachy. Why would I go looking for someone who wants to kill me? Oh, I don't know. The events of the last two movies might lead someone to think that. Come on, everywhere else is full. You've checked four compartments. Who do you think that is? Professor R.J. Lupin. Since when did professors ride along with students on the train to Hogwarts? Sirius Black has escaped from Azkaban to come after you. No kid this age would ever tell important secrets to their friends in this close proximity to a teacher, even if they thought that teacher was asleep. Boy, it sure is lucky they picked the one compartment where a professor just happened to be sleeping. When did the Hogwarts choir learn this song? During their summer break? This is the first night of school. Or is this some kind of school song or annual tradition to sing a song about something wicked coming? Unlike the Oracle, the new Dumbledore feels no need to explain his altered appearance. A word of caution. Dementors are vicious creatures. This warning came just in time. Dumbledore clearly said the Dementors would be stationed at every entrance to the grounds, and instead they're all just hovering out over the water. Already they are ups. Taking form of a giant spectral dog is among the darkest omens in our world. I'd be scared, except Harry faces death every year and lives, so this is really just another day. You're supposed to stroke it. Ah, the things you learn at the age of 13. Then you wait and see if he bows back. And if he does, you can go and touch him. If not, well, we'll get to that later. I'm beginning to think the adults at Hogwarts purposely withhold information for sheer comic relief. The director said, let's give you an apple to eat in this scene so you'll look like even more of an asshole. Anything that flies in the Harry Potter universe is contractually obligated to do some soaring laps over Hogwarts Castle. It's great to see all those Dementors still flying around and doing their job. Oh, wait. Class dismissed! Hopefully Buckbeak doesn't kill any of you while I'm gone. Hermione isn't old enough to be hot yet. Black could be anywhere. That's racist. Also, there's nothing the entire magical kingdom can do to find Sirius Black. If only he were stranded on the side of the road needing a bed for the night. Also, wizard newspapers make ridiculous text layout decisions. No one knows. When she get here? Yeah. If Hermione is using a time travel device so that she can be in two places at once, why would Ron notice anything abnormal? Ridiculous! <laughs> Holy sh! she just turned that cobra into something even scarier. Why is everyone laughing? That's enough for today if you'd all like to collect your books. No one else gets a turn because Harry Bogarted the Boggart. Hey, your mother, Lily's. Oh yes, I knew her. Um, this dude totally f your mom, Harry. Not a single professor inside this castle would help Sirius Black to enter it. There is no way these two would have this conversation right in front of students who are notorious for faking sleep in order to eavesdrop. Hogwarts is a dick to safety. Invisible Harry is an asshole. Also, way to give away your position, assface. I thought you were supposed to be incognito. Yeah, that door always just opens on its own. No reason to think that's suspicious. It sure is fortunate that the Minister of Magic and Professor McGonagall decided to visit this random pub owner so that Harry could hear some extremely crucial information he could use later. Character who really needs glasses loses glasses during crucial action sequence cliche. If only there was a spell to improve one's vision. Or if only those glasses were stranded on the side of the road needing... Yeah, never mind. Did the Whomping Willow's branch stop so that Hermione could grab onto Harry? Oh, man. If you had only fallen right side up. Oh well. Maybe next time, Harry. I found him! I know. <laughs> I found the Let's kill him! Come on! Let's kill him! What's with the pronoun game? Why scare the kid when you mean to kill the rat? Severus, please. Well, there goes the theory that you need your own personal wand to make magic. So what was all that bullshit in the last movie with Ron's broken wand and the school not giving him a replacement? Also, why is Harry's disarming spell so strong that it blasts Snape across the room, while Snape and Lupin's disarming spell merely disarmed the person? So Lupin turned out to be a good guy after all, and so did Sirius Black. So this movie's primary antagonist is Peter Pettigrew? You almost tore my leg off. I was going for the rat. You were? Nobody. You have horrible aim, and once you knew you were dragging Ron, why did you keep doing it? Oh, right, because the werewolf would totally be surprised by a sudden full moon. Professor? Hermione tries to reason with the werewolf. How did Snape not only miss the freaking werewolf, but not hear him howl just before he came out of the tree? Is capturing a soul like winning the Stanley Cup? Where everyone gets a chance to kiss it before passing it along? When in doubt, I find retracing my steps to be a wise place to begin. Honestly, can't you just spell out exactly what they should do instead of being such a vague bastard? 
Is this not a mission in which you actually want them to succeed? Hey, you know what might help with the whole let's not be seen while we're time traveling problem? A f***ing cloak that makes you f***ing invisible. That's Pettigrew. Harry, you can't. Dude, where was all this anger when you first found out about this? Ow! Another, more normal reaction would be, oh, so that's what that was. Seriously, everyone in the execution party is enamored with the countryside? Not one cursory glance toward the animal you were about to kill? In the time it took them to finally lure Buckbeak into the woods and out of sight, the original Hermione, Ron, and Harry should have seen Hermione and Harry taking Buckbeak to safety from atop the hill. Why is Hagrid's house different in this movie? Like, before it was a one-room thing on the edge of the evil forest. Now it's a two-room joining the edge of a cliff. Can a werewolf really not tell the difference between a real wolf and a teenage girl screaming like a wolf? If, while trying to hide from a werewolf, you back into a clearing, you deserve to die. Harry and Hermione resign themselves to werewolf death instead of, I don't know, casting a spell at it or something. Expecto Patronum! Original Harry somehow didn't hear this bullshit. Okay, so they did all the stuff they needed to do. They saved Buckbeak, they distracted the werewolf, and Harry sent Dear Jesus toward the Dementors. But nothing to prevent Peter Pettigrew from escaping? Couldn't they have spent a little time figuring out what they needed to do before they actually left? Invisible cloak, check. Rat glue traps and or Hermione's cat, check. I saw myself conjuring the Patronus before. I knew I could do it this time because, well, I'd already done it. Does that make sense? No! Yeah, this awful, terrible excuse of a human being who escaped freaking Azkaban probably doesn't need a guard or anything while he's in this dinky Hogwarts cell. <laughs> See, something like this might have worked against a werewolf. The ones that love us never really leave us. And you can always find them in here. And also in that mirror from the first movie, which you seem to have forgotten about entirely. How come Sirius didn't have to do that whole bowing ritual with Buckbeak in order to be able to pat him on the head and then ride him? You have to go. Harry and Hermione run from the courtyard up a dozen flight of stairs to the infirmary in about five seconds flat. He's free. We did it. Did what? Good job saving the day. Don't ever use that time machine again, though. No matter how dire things get in future sequels. Let's talk about the movie's time travel. They go back in time, but practically everything we see them do is stuff that happened the first time through. Harry getting hit with a rock, distracting the werewolf, etc. This is a paradox of Terminator proportions unless there's an original, unique experience where the time turner isn't being used. Harry and crew would go to Hagrid's cabin and likely get caught by Dumbledore. Then none of the things we see happen would actually happen. They don't save Buckbeak, Ron doesn't lose his rat, Sirius doesn't drag Ron into the tree and into the shack, Harry doesn't find out Scabbers is Peter Pettigrew, Lupin turns into a werewolf somewhere else, and Sirius doesn't get nailed by the Dementors. And scene. The problem with this, though, besides the fact that we in the audience didn't get to see this original experience, is that at this point, only Buckbeak has been harmed, and you weren't using a time travel device just to go back and save that asshole. They don't have any other motivation to begin going back and trying to fix stuff. Thus, a paradox. None of it made any difference. Pettigrew escaped. That's what I'm saying! I did my waiting! He's been sighted, he's been sighted! Who? Oh. Sirius Black! Dufftown? It's not far from here. Duffman is thrusting in the direction of the problem! I tend to skip a day now and again, you know. <laughs> I used to be a werewolf, but I'm alright. No! No! Gregory, no! No, this is bad, Wendy. Hold on to me. Book of the Dead. Found in human flesh and inked in blood, this ancient Sumerian text contained bizarre burial rites, funerary incantations, and demon resurrection passages. It was never meant for the world of the living. See if I actually if you want some dinner, and you with the egg roll and start to try down, I said to myself, this motherfucker, he's carrying on like he ain't got a care in the world, and who knows? Maybe he don't. Maybe this fool's such a bad motherfucker.